kept you waiting, huh? Yo, I hit the jewel, I got some goals I sold a little weed, but I could never sell my soul And when I'm in LA, you find me out in little Toe Come up, go with my ramen, I'ma need another blow, let's go Hey everyone, uh, a long time no see, huh? Sorry it, uh, it took me a while to actually work on this thing. Long story short, stuff happened. And that really destroyed my inspiration for video making. But thanks to the support from you guys, I feel way better now. And I'm back to making content on a semi-regular basis. Hopefully it won't take a month to create the next Sonichu video, <laughs> that'll be for sure. But now we are back to reviewing the mind of Hideo Kojima. Jima's son, Christian Weston Chandler. Now, if you haven't seen the first video in my Sonichu series, what are you doing here? Go watch it. But for those who need a quick recap, basically we went over issue zero, episode one, which detailed the absurd origins of Sonichu and Rosachu. It was bad really bad but believe it or not we're actually not finished with issue zero yet we've merely finished episode one of issue zero there's a lot more to cover in this clusterfuck of a comic so get out your sonichu medallions and your polygamous marriage documents because we're jumping back into the crazy world of quickville let's jump back into this love quest <laughs> Sonichu in episode two, Genesis of the Love Hogs. <laughs> Why? Why did you use that pun? Ah! Yeah! Oh, since my transformation, my new, bigger body needs more food than before. Uh, Chris, I am not a fan of that innuendo. That is not very Kanye West, Jesus is king of you. And nuts and apples can't cut it. You're not helping, Chris. It's been over a week now, and I'm so hungry. Not only that, I feel so lonesome. Huh? Okay, so a couple problems here. First of all, this is how the first five panels are formatted. You would think... I think it would go this way in the linear fashion, but in actuality, it goes this way, which isn't how comics work. It's not even a manga thing where it's from right to left. No, this is up and down and all around, bruh. Second problem, it's just so convenient that Sonichu feels lonely, and then he sees a girl just like him. What a crazy coincidence. That is totally how real relationships work. I mean, I mean Chris would know about that, wouldn't he? And not only is it unrealistic on another level, but it's also extremely predictable. This is literally the trope of all romantic tropes. Just play around with it a bit, Chris. Come on, please. This is so beyond by the numbers that it genuinely hurts. Wow. Yeah. Wow, what a beautiful looking woman with that big ass nose. <laughs> Bro, look at those legs. Look at those legs. They're like broomsticks. Where's she running off to? 15 minutes later. So, she lives in that cabin, huh? And with her trainer. Maybe I can get a bite as well. Chris, would it really kill you to put the, the words in the white boxes, please? Did you have fun, Rosie? Ah, uh, so-so. Well, come on in. I'm fixing some Brunswick stew. Brunswick stew? A as in, like, uh, the bowling product? Since my transformation last week, I felt so lonesome because there's no other Pokemon like me to love. Wow, isn't that convenient? They're both extremely lonely. I really wonder how the story is going to end. This feels like a Sony Me fan fiction, and yet it, it technically isn't one. It kinda is, and yet it isn't. I don't know if I'd call two fan characters uh, proof that Chris Chan's into Sony Me, but the way this is written, it feels so much like a Sony Me fan fiction. Another by the numbers predictable piece of trash. There are no stakes whatsoever, just two people falling in love. It's the most boring, mindless shit I I've ever had to read. Oh, relax, Rosie. What about my Dragonite David? He's loyal. Why'd you name him David? That's like a lame fucking name. Oh, don't mind me. I just named my Squirtle Timothy, okay? Oh, come on, Kel. David's just too big for me. Um, no, I don't like the implications of that. You can have him. I don't want him. 
Well, I can't say I didn't try. Hey, for all we know, your love could be just around the corner. Golly, I wonder if her love will be just around the corner. Or right at the door. Uh, who's saying that? Is that Kel saying that? Or is that Sonichu saying that? Also, if it is Kel, how would she know? Is Kel a fucking prophet? I'll look at that. Knock, knock. Hello, how may I? Hey. Oh, look at that. Her love was right around the corner. I, I could have never predicted that. I'm just a wild one who hasn't eaten ear much for over a ear week. Look at how terrible Chris is at drawing. Sonichu's ear is literally separating the text. And look at all of this white space. What a jumbled mess. I don't believe it. A handsome Pokemon who... Come on, what is this? A handsome Pokemon who is like me. I've got to learn about him. Come on in. Whoa. So what's your name? Sonichu. My name's Rosichu, but you can call me anytime. Hey everyone, so I'm um I'm trying to kill myself here. Um, how do you how do you do that? Where, where do you put the nunchuck into? How about I call you Rosie? Oh, uh, is that is that how you do it? We would like to play. <laughs> we we would like to you get cause cause it's what they said in the uh the old Wii commercials. All right, guys, I'll see you I'll see you in heaven. I, not hell, cause I listen to. Kanye West. Hey, Kel, we have a guest. That's my nickname. Bro, what's happening here? Is Rosichu just like having a spiritual awakening? Is her spirit climbing out of her body, bruh? This is clearly a dimensional merge moment. Boy, I thought I was the speedy one. Well, I think she's cute anyway. Huh? Who is it, Rosie? The stew's almost ready, and I... Kel, this is Sonichu. He wishes to... Break bread with us hello wow another hedgehog pokemon and a male for rosachu ah this must be fate or just really predictable storytelling it's nice to meet you sonichu have a seat with Risey. The stew's almost ready, Rosie. Entertain your new boyfriend. Whoa, Kelv, they just met. Settle down a bit. So, what's your favorite color? Uh, yellow? No, blue. Why would you put a Monty Python reference there? There's no reason for it. It's so out of nowhere. One night, a few days later. It sure is. Isn't the night sky so romantic? Why is the dialogue backwards? I could just sit here and look at it for hours with you. Yeah, but then we'd fall asleep together. Who the fuck talks like this? And I wouldn't have it any other way, Rosie. Oh, Sonichu, I'm so happy with you. I la heart the you. And I la heart the you, Rosichu. <laughs> as often as birds tweet, you are my lovely sweet sweet. <laughs> What? Heart? No, it's it's supposed to be sweetheart, not heart sweet. What? Oh, Sonic Chew. Uh... <laughs> so that was Sonic Chew issue zero, episode two. And it did a whole lot of nothing. The dialogue is stilted. The plot is predictable. The art is... Sonichu. So overall, this was a terrible episode to an already terrible issue. It's literally a Son Amy fan fiction, but instead of Sonic and Amy, it's Sonichu and Rosachu. Overall, I give this a garbage out of 10. Let's move on to episode three. She's Ramona Flowers, FL, so is Howard. Episode three, Sonichu versus... What? It, huh? Night... GameStop KB! First of all, if GameStop had a logo like that, they'd be even more out of business than they are currently. Secondly, all right, so here's the issue with the Nakarotten name. So this character's name is actually Nate Sirk, which is literally just Christian backwards. But here's something even funnier. Chris Chan misspells his own character's name. So the actual spelling of Nate Sirk is N-A-I-T-S-I-R-H-C. But on the first page of Sonic Chu Episode 3, Issue 0, it is spelled N-A-I-T-C-I-R-H-C. So instead of Nate Sirk, you get Nate Kirk. 
How can you be so stupid to have your character's name just be your name backwards and yet at the same time misspell it? Natesick, son of Giovanni. Team Rocket, brighter than light. Surrender now, or prepare to fight. Release Rosichu now. Well, that's out of nowhere. Then we will fight. Zapdos, go. I can't believe this, even after what happened. Earlier, when Kel had to run some errands to the Quickville Mall and allowed Rosie to borrow her credit card, Kel entrusted me to make sure Rosie didn't spend over a hundred dollars. Riveting. At first, it was easy due to her willpower, but then, with all the sales and coupons... Hmm, twenty dollars for this lovely bracelet. Wait, 75% off? All right. Why are they looking at a fish tank? Well, I'm not super Man. First of all, whoa, Amber Crombie and Fitch, what happened to your logo? First GameStop, now my boy Amber Crombie's getting the, the minimalistic treatment. This is clearly the fault of the Democrats. <laughs> Secondly, look at Sonichu's teeth. That's clearly inspired by the Cal art style. Thankfully, Kel gave me cash for lunch. But how was I to know that cheeseburgers had pickles? Ah, that salad was great. What's wrong, Sweet Bolt? I, I huh, hate p p pickles. The bun is in your mind. What What does that mean, Chris? The, the bun is in your mind. Uh, no, Chris, the bun is right there. Sonichu is holding it. And then... Shatter. His Zapto snatched my love. Help! Which brings us up to now. Please excuse me while I save my girlfriend. I'm not even gonna comprehend what, what that even is. I don't know what that is. Sky uppercut. Drill peck. Mega kick. Wing attack. Double team. Wouldn't that be a triple team since there are like three of them? Confused Zapdos. Final blow countdown. 10. Yo, yo, he's doing the Jordan. Nine. <laughs> eight. Seven. Uh. Six. Five. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, Chris, you totally were not lazy at the end there. I understand, buddy. Hey, I couldn't miss out on this. <laughs> Uh, whatever noise this panel makes. Enjoy your victory now, Hedgehog. But we will meet again. And when we do, I will capture you for my father and Team Rocket. Let's go, Raikou. CVS Pharmacy. Hooray! Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on with Sonichu's head? Why does he have two heads? Why does he have two heads? Thank you, Sonichu. You're my hero, sweet bolt. I was astounded with how you battled, Sonichu. You rock. Thank, Thank you, Sonichu. Sonichu. I admire a quick veil. I congratulate you. Congratulate? Congratulate? Are you kidding me, Chris? On your victory, and I thank you for saving the day. Good job, Sonichu. Yeah, thank you. Epilogue. Well, Sonichu, I feel like this comic book is my best work yet. <laughs> I think so too, father. Why does Sonic call Chris father? This is something that is never explained in this issue whatsoever. In fact, this is the first time they meet, isn't it? So Sonichu literally knows Chris Chan for no reason whatsoever and calls him father for no reason whatsoever. Some explanation would be nice, Chris. But wow, all this fantastic creativity and you still are girlfriend free? Oh, jeez. All right, so, um, first of all, using your own self-insert to insert your own romantic struggles is easily the most incel thing you could ever do. Second of all, Chris, uh, mashing two popular characters together is not fantastic creativity. Furthermore, calling your villain Nate Sirk, which is just your name backwards, is not creativity. Calling your town Quickville, which is just your initials, is not creativity. Calling all of your characters blank Sonichu is not creativity. Inserting yourself into a fictional world 
not just a character meant to represent you, but full on yourself into this fictional world is not creativity. It's creatively stupid, but nowhere near the amount of fantastic creativity you claim that it is. Calling your town Quickville is not gonna make you the next J.R.R. Tolkien, buddy. Thirdly, there's a lot more to a woman liking you than fantastic creativity. If your main selling point for a romantic relationship is, I have a fantastic creativity, then you're a fucking incel. But Domsville, my girlfriend said I had a fantastic creativity. Well, man, I I'm sorry to say, but, uh, She's gonna cheat on you next week. I'm sorry, man. I just gotta break it to you now. It bothers me too, but I never give up. I'll find a boyfriend free girl around my age yet. Don't worry, Chris. She'll be right around the corner. Well, I gotta go to Charlottesville Mall to try again. Good luck, Pop. Oh no, the mall. Don't call anybody. <laughs> Virginia Sonnet Chew. What a rad license plate, bro. There he goes with a grin on his face. In the end, he'll say, one girlfriend, please. Ah, uh, yes, of course. That's how I got my girlfriend. I just went to Girlfriend King and asked for one girlfriend, please. Because he'll probably fail again. I'm proud to have a brave father. So being an incel means being a brave father. Wow, you're so courageous. So that was episode three of issue zero. And while it is an improvement from the past two episodes, this time having a greater focus on action, and the stakes are actually kind of decently high this time, yeah, this is still shitty. The story feels rushed, and feels like Chris just wanted to get it over with as soon as possible. Especially with that countdown sequence where it just randomly cuts to the Four, three, two, one at the very end. And once again, Chris has very stupid, stupid, stupid creative decisions. The villain's name is literally Nate Sirk. Chris and Sonichu know each other, even though never in the comic do they ever actually meet each other. This episode literally ends with Chris Chan venting about how much of a loner he is. So this is peak Sonichu, and it's still fucking shit so far. Yeah, this is Sonichu, alright. It's still one of the worst webcomics ever created, in all honesty. The writing is still just as inhuman as ever. Chris clearly has no idea how actual humans communicate. The chemistry between characters is unnatural and stilted. The plot has plot holes that can be easily fixed. For example, how does Sonichu know Chris Chan? Why does he call him father? Why isn't that explained? Explored. Episode 2 does nothing but talk about why Sonichu and Rosichu are in love. It's not even a will they or will they not type of romance. You literally know what's going to happen. In conclusion, this is dumb. Really dumb and really bad. And believe it or not, we are still not done with issue zero yet. We have the classic Sonichu strips and the sub episode to go through. Once again, we still have more issue zero material before we even reach issue one. So next video, we're gonna wrap up issue zero once and for all. So thank you all so much for supporting the last video. That video did really well. And as terrible as Sonichu is and as painful as it is to make videos on this, I still find it interesting to explore the mind of this really weird person in this really weird series. So thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a like down below if you liked this. Don't forget to subscribe for more Sonichu content and content like this. I hope you guys have a great night, and I will see you on the next Dumbsville video. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.